Welcome to our review on genetic crosses. So the first thing that we actually need to know here is that you actually have two copies of every single gene, one from the mother and one from the father. Now those genes may be the same or they could be different. And what we need to know is a certain term that refers to these different forms of a gene, which is the word allele. So whenever you see that word allele, it's just referring to the fact that we get different forms of a gene. So you've got a gene for eye colour, but you have alleles for blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, etc. So it's just the different form that a gene can take. And what we actually find is that all of these genes go together to actually give us our phenotype, the characteristics that we see. And in most cases, those phenotypes are caused by multiple genes. So it's not just a single gene that gives you eye colour but it would be several different ones that all interact together. So just remember that most phenotypes are caused by multiple genes, not just a single one. Two other terms that we need to know are the terms dominant allele and recessive allele. If we're referring to the dominant allele, then this one will be shown whether we have one or two of those alleles present. So what we find is it's almost like the stronger gene, if you will. So what happens is that if you've obviously got both dominant alleles, you see that characteristic. But if you've got one dominant and one recessive allele, you still see the dominant characteristic because it overpowers the other one. And whenever we're writing these, we will always use a capital letter to represent the dominant allele. The recessive allele then is the one that will only be expressed as a characteristic if both alleles are recessive. So if you've got one dominant and one recessive, we don't see the recessive actual feature. You've got to have both recessive alleles to get that recessive feature being shown. And we always represent these by a lowercase letter. So just to give you some idea of characteristics that are caused by these dominant alleles, things like dark hair or brown eyes, whether you can roll your tongue, all of those are dominant characteristics. So you only need one allele to actually be able to have those features. If, however, we're considering the recessive characteristics, things like blonde hair, blue eyes, and you can't roll your tongue, then that means that you've got both recessive alleles for that particular feature. That's the only reason that we can see it. Next, we need to know four other terms, and you need to be familiar with these terms to be able to answer these genetics questions on the exam. So the first term is the genotype which quite simply is just the combination of alleles that are present in an organism. If we refer to them as being homozygous dominant, then what we need to sort of understand here are the two parts of our actual term. Dominant tells us that it is a dominant allele, okay, so the one that we only need one of in order to be expressed. But homozygous, break that word down into two. Homo, same. Just like if someone's a homosexual, same sex. Homozygous, same genes. So what we see here is if something is homozygous dominant, then it's got two copies of the dominant allele. So you'd see two capital letters. If something is homozygous recessive, then it's just got two copies of the recessive allele. So it would both be lowercase letters. The only other term we could see is heterozygous. And just like heterosexual, it's different sexes, Heterozygous, it's different alleles. So you've got one dominant and one recessive, one capital, one lowercase. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually look at the steps we'd need to go through to work out one of these genetic crosses in what's called a Punnett square. So the first thing you'd need to do is state the phenotype of the parent, so the characteristic that each parent shows. Then you state the genotype for the parents, so the actual alleles they have. You can write the gametes that each parent then has, so they split off. We then draw our Punnett square, state the phenotype for each offspring, and then finally state the percentage or the ratio of the genotype present in the offspring. So let's have a look at a kind of question that we could get here. Work out the genetic cross between a mother who is homozygous recessive for blue eyes and a father who is homozygous dominant with brown eyes. So the first thing that we actually need to do is pick out the key bits of information in that question. 
Now, it might help you to have a highlighter just to go through and highlight the key bits as you read it, or you could just underline or circle bits if you prefer. But make it a habit to go through and pick out those important things. Things like the mother is homozygous recessive, the father is homozygous dominant. This will help you out with the next step. So the first thing we need to do is to write down the phenotype and the genotypes of both parents. So from the question, we can see that the mother is homozygous recessive for blue eyes. So the phenotype, the characteristic she shows, is blue eyes and she's homozygous recessive. So we're going to use both lowercase letters and we'll just use B for the sake of this question. In the father, the question we can see tells us he's homozygous dominant with brown eyes. So brown eyes is the phenotype and that has the two capital B's for the genotype. The next thing we need to do is split them into those individual gametes. So when we're drawing our little Punnett square, you can see fathers on one side, mothers on the other, and whatever those alleles were in their genotype, you just split them. So the father has got two capitals and the mother has two lowercase b's. Because they're gametes, the way we actually show that is by just putting a circle around it. So as soon as you've got those letters written in, put a little circle around each of the gametes just to show that that is what they are. Now, in order to actually fill out the Punnett square, what we're going to do is whatever is at the top of the column, you write into the two squares beneath it. So I've colored in the little b's to make it a little bit easier to see here. So if we have a look at our father's actual genes, what we can see is that we start off with that first gamete with the capital B, which I've colored red for you, and that goes into the two cells beneath it. Then for the blue B, two cells beneath that. So that just shows the father's actual contributions. And then we need to do the same for the mother. So all we're going to do is whatever is at the start of the row goes in the two boxes to the right. So the green B goes in the top two and the purple B goes in the bottom two. And that then gives us the genotypes of our possible offspring in those four boxes. So one thing that's so frequently forgotten is to actually write the phenotype for each of the possible offspring in the box. So in this case, because they've all got one dominant allele, so the capital letter, then that means that they will all have the dominant feature, which in this case is brown. So they would all have brown eyes, which I've written in those boxes, as you can see. So the very last step is we need to write down the chance of having a particular phenotype. Now, some questions will actually specify which phenotype they want. Others, if it's just left open, then just make sure that when you are writing this, you say it's the chance of brown eyes, blue eyes, whatever it is. So in this case, because all four of those boxes are brown eyes, then it's a 100% chance. Or you could have written that as four in four, or you could use the ratio of four to zero, or you could use a fraction of four over four. So whichever one you are most confident with, whether it be percentages, something in something, or ratios or fractions, any of them will get you the mark. So just pick the one you are most confident in using and use that, but don't forget to write it in at the end. So if we look at a second question then, green pea pods are the dominant characteristic yellow pea pods are recessive. Work out the possible offspring for a genetic cross of two heterozygous parents. So in the question, it's told us which phenotype is dominant and which phenotype is recessive. So green is dominant and yellow is recessive. It's also told us that both parents are heterozygous. So that means that they've got different alleles, one dominant, one recessive. So because each of those parents has got one dominant allele, that means that they will both have green pea pods. So both the mother and the father, their phenotype is green and their genotype is the same, capital G and a lowercase g. Then we draw our little Punnett square and put your little gametes in the circles as previously. Start at the top of the column and fill that in on the two cells beneath it and then do the same, whatever's at the start of the row, fill it into the two cells to the right. Don't forget to write in the phenotype for each offspring. So in this case, because we spot the capital letters, any with a capital letter in there will be green. So we've got three green boxes and then only the bottom right has both lowercase. So because it's got both recessive alleles, 
we see the recessive phenotype, which is yellow. So that actually gives us our 75% chance of green, or you could describe it as three and four, three to one, or three quarters. About the only other kind of question they could give us is this one here. So green pea pods are the dominant characteristic, yellow pea pods are recessive. Work out the possible offspring for a genetic cross of a heterozygous father and a homozygous recessive mother. So again, we start off by identifying the phenotypes and genotypes of the parents. So the mother is homozygous recessive, so she will be yellow with both lowercase g's. And the father is heterozygous, so green and one capital, one lowercase g. Split them into the gametes and draw out your little Punnett square. Whatever's at the top of the row, you put actually going in the two cells beneath. And whatever is on the left hand side, put in the two boxes to the right. Don't forget to label the phenotypes for each of the offspring. In this case, the two on the left hand side are going to be green and the two on the right hand side will be yellow because they are the only ones with both recessive alleles. So in this case, it's a 50% chance of green or two in four or two to two or two out of four. So aside from giving you a little scenario with different parents with some kind of features, whether it be eye color, hair color, types of pea pods, doesn't really matter. They could also ask you to work out what sex we would actually have. Now, hopefully we do remember that sex is determined by the X and the Y chromosomes. So in men, then they always have the one X and one Y. And in women, they have two X's. Now, do go careful when you're asked what chromosomes are present in a female, not just to write a single X. Always write it XX. If it's men, always write XY. So don't just write a single letter. It has to be both of them for you to get the marks. So any time you're asked to draw a genetic cross diagram or a Punnett square to show how gender is inherited, then you will always have the same starting point and the same end result because every mother is female and therefore will have XX and every father is male and therefore will have XY. So all you will find is that when you fill out the Punnett square, as you can see there, we will always end up with a 50% chance of being female or a two in four or two to two or two over four. So again, just pick whichever version you are happiest with. You don't have to write all of them to get it right. The percentage, the ratio, whatever is easiest for you, just quote that one.